epic backpedals on Fortnite mech with nerfs, and more coming up on today's episode of Blaze and Tech News. Hey Gadget here, you're just in time for the latest episode in the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is Blaze and Tech News. My name is Taylor Merrick, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss out on the latest news. We do this on the daily around here, except for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be off. I have uh, some offline events uh, to do, so I won't be able to record a show. But if you're subscribed, you'll be notified when there are new episodes, which we do daily around here. And uh, speaking of uh, our featured story, we'll be taking a look at Epic finally backpedaling on Fortnite's brute mech suit with some dramatic nerfs. And we'll also be taking a look at Google, I guess, ditching the uh, dessert names for Android 10. Will this spell the beginning of a new trend in naming? We'll find out. We'll also be taking a look at Outerbox's new wireless charging system. And finally, we'll be taking a look at Minecraft Earth, now on Android, in closed beta. And you might be wondering, don't you usually have a little bit more articles? Well, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter show today, uh, simply because I have things going on in the background. You guys have no idea. Um, outside of the <laughs> full-time job that I go to and taking care of a family and a kid and uh, like the two companies that I run outside of you know this, uh, my day is pretty full. Like I, I seriously need like a full-time assistant to follow me around. Uh, quite frankly, I actually know somebody who, when they were at their job, had two full-time assistants following them around. I, they, I don't know how in the world they did it. It's almost like they had to figure out how to clone themselves twice, and then they did stuff and the assistants did. So I don't know. Anyways, I'm getting off the beaten track here, but um, yeah, hence why. You're like, well, usually you'd expect a full show. Well, you would, but uh, I'll still recap some of the highlights of today. And if I happen to miss anything, be sure and let me know uh, with a comment or uh, let me know on Twitter at Tech News Gadget. With that out of the way, let's get on over to today in tech history. All right, today is August 22nd. 2019 on this day in 1987 the legend of zelda is released for the nes in north america considered one of the most influential games of all time it was a forerunner of the role-playing video game genre and spawned one of the most successful series in video games history and it's still um, alive today there's still games going on being created with zelda it, unimaginable right i mean it's still going right also, on this day in history, in 1955, following a Los Angeles symposium hosted by IBM, a group of representatives from 17 groups that had ordered the IBM 704 mainframe computer met at the Rand Corporation in Santa Monica, California. The outcome of the meeting was the computer's first user group called SHARE. The name was chosen to promote the idea of sharing information and programs between installations. The group grew quickly, eventually producing new software and documentation for their IBM computers. And with that out of the way, let's head on over to today's feature story. Fortnite fans, one and all, gather around as you um, witness a momentous day in history. I guess um, Epic is finally backpedaling on uh, the Fortnite's brute mech suit with some dramatic nerfs and in case you are wondering the changes are now live across all game modes apparently <laughs> they heard your feedback and all the whining and complaining and even though they had their own reasons for it um, i'm fairly certain they listened to you guys well enough to uh, make some decent changes to i guess help uh epic games has heard the feedback and this afternoon the fortnite developer announced a series of sweeping changes to its newly introduced brute mech suit that has had game community in open revolt for the last few weeks the changes have gone into effect immediately with epic saying players will not need to update the game at all so i'll save you some time in a post titled brute balance adjustments epic details the substantial nerfs coming to the item including a reduction in the number of rockets it can fire the rate it fires those rockets and the number of other powerful advantages the suit offered players the mech suit first arrived in early August with the launch of Fortnite Season 10. Um, 
And let's see, to recap the big changes that are live now, if for those of you who want stats, they decreased the maximum amount of rockets fired by the Brute in a single charge from 10 to 6. I had a feeling they are going to do that. They decreased the rate at which the rockets are fired from the Brute by 56%. They also decreased the radius of the Brute's rocket explosion by 42%. Increased the dash cooldown from 3 to 5 seconds. Decreased, yeah, increased the dash cooldown. So you can, um, I guess, wait longer to dash. Decreased the velocity gained from boosting while in the air by 33%. The Brute also no longer grants materials to the driver and passenger when stomping or dashing through the environment. This won't be arriving right away, Epic says, but after these other changes are in effect. They also decreased the material cost of using the gun shield's overshield from 200 materials to 75. And finally, they increased the health of the Brute from 1,000 to 1,250. Epic gives a little line or two of reasoning for almost all of these changes, and each makes a fair amount of sense. The developer is effectively acknowledging that it did in fact release a game-breaking, overpowered element into play right at the launch of a new competitive esports tournament circuit. With these changes, including the reasonable health buff, to the mech suit, the item should be slower to operate, less fruitful as a farming vehicle, and less lethal against enemy players. In addition to all of this, Epic is reducing the spawn rate of the Brute in all storm modes in normal game modes, while keeping the rate the same in competitive modes, a change it made earlier this month to prevent controversy from going around it. So, yeah, in case you are wondering, Fortnite community seems pleased so far. Jack, Courage, Dunlop, uh, finally... <laughs> said finally the mechs have been nerfed good riddance ewok phase uh said thank you keep this up tim the tap man um also uh i guess had something to say on it what did he say did he say something yes there you go there you go you heard from tim himself tim the tap man so yeah what do you guys think for the changes made let me know down in the comment section down below i don't know i was kind of fine with where it was at um, to be fair, it gave me some satisfaction, but honestly, I don't think I was playing the game long enough to actually get to the point where I was complaining about the mechs to the extent that other people were. So I probably would have changed my view. I either would have been like, yeah, the mechs are fine, leave them alone, or I would have actually said, no, nah, I kind of agree with some of you guys, but I think the changes did help. Um, they obviously increased the health to compensate. Uh, the material cost of using a gunner overshield, uh, they decreased the material cost there. Um, you don't get materials by smashing stuff anyways. And um, I guess they made it a little bit... Well, now you actually have to time how you use your dashes and your rockets and explosions and everything. Um, so you're not just like blowing up everything. But uh, yeah, I'm happy. Um, it's probably uh, a good change nonetheless. All right, moving right along. Well, Google may be doing away with its dessert naming scheme after a long, delicious run. You see, the company announced today the next version of its mobile operating system will be called Android 10. It's currently in public beta and expected to roll out in the next couple of months. Google had long named its Android software after treats. After its alpha and beta versions, it launched Cupcake, Donut, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, Lollipop, Marshmallow, Nougat, Oreo, and Pie. Perhaps the developers struggled with finding a dessert that starts with Q? I don't know. Some people on Twitter had suggested options such as, well, you could call it Android Quarter of a Pound Cake. Um, But in a blog post today, Google explained some desserts aren't inclusive of its international community, I guess. In many languages, the names translate to words with different letters that don't really fit with its alphabetical order sequence, so it's kind of confusing for other people. In any, in any case, a spokesperson for Google said that 10 refers to Android Q's version number, saying it felt like the right time to make this change. It's even harder for new Android users who are currently unfamiliar with the naming convention to understand if their phone is running the latest version, so I guess they're all confused by all that. So I'm sorry, geeks. Uh, I guess the general community at large won, and so now it's Android Q um, slash 10. So Android is currently running on 2.5 billion active devices. That includes not only Google Pixel phones, but Samsung, Nokia, and many other brands. The Android logo also got a slight refresh. The green Android mascot only shows the top of its head rather than a full body now. The text, which says Android under the face, is now black rather than green. So, 
in case you're wondering, it may have a little bit changes, but uh, yeah. hopefully it's for the good. And hopefully, I mean, I kind of, to some extent, was like, oh, cool. Well, I like the new naming conventions. Um, but then I was like, wait, I used to like the old-fashioned ones, but I could never really tell if it, yeah, was the latest one. But, oh, well, I, I guess we'll be okay without it. Plus, you could have only gone to 27 versions before people got confused anyways, and then I guarantee you, you could uh, not find a uh, dessert that starts with X. So that's probably why they're like, yeah, we're kind of getting into the naming phases that are a bit more confusing. So I guess it was for the good, but uh, farewell, a quarter of a pound cake, um, you will be missed, and uh, hello to uh, Android Q slash 10. Moving on to some gadget news, the OuterBox's new wireless charging system seems to be stacking up pretty nicely here. Now the concept of portable battery packs that stack up one on top of the other for recharging isn't new, but OuterBox's new Outer Spot system appears to be the first that brings wireless charging element to the mix. Priced at $130 for a base unit and one charge pad, no it's not cheap, you can use the system at home or on the go to wirelessly charge any Q wireless enabled device including iPhones as well as Samsung and Google Android phones. International prices aren't available yet but it converts to roughly 110 pounds or uh, 200 Australian. Additional charge packs are available for 70 bucks and you can charge up to three pads at the same time stacked using the 36 watt USB-C power adapter. OuterBox is also selling a wireless charging stand for 60 US. Now although the 5000 MAH capacity wireless charging pads are a little bigger than your standard portable power bank. They're fairly lightweight and slim and will fit in some pockets just fine. Just don't expect them to get into the front pocket of a pair of tight jeans. Uh, and, and quite honestly, just get a case to go along with the, the accessories. You'll, you'll save yourself time, trouble, and hassle, as well as worrying if you're crushing the device or sitting on it or um, losing it and it goes bouncing off down the sidewalk. So they do charge devices at up to 10 watt speeds. However, with iPhones, the top charging speed is 7.5. There's also an option for wired charging from the portable puck using a USB-C cable. For iPhones, you would need a USB-C to a lightning cable adapter, which costs roughly $15 to $20. After using the OuterBox for a couple of days, the author says that it's a pretty nifty charging system. That said, uh, OuterBox should really consider getting the base system price down to 100 bucks and uh, the additional pucks costing $50 as opposed to what they currently charge. But eh, give or take 20 or 30 bucks, I mean, I guess. But don't know exactly what went on behind the scene, but here you are. Here's a photo for you in case you wanted to take a peek. For those of you listening to the audio version, hi. Um, you're missing out. If you want to catch the video of today's show, head on over to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget. All right, moving on to our gaming article of today. It looks like Minecraft Earth is available for Android in beta, and uh, you can actually pre-register on Google Play. Um, I guess right now, uh, Minecraft, the game that never stops giving. You see, the latest AR game that's set to hit smartphones is Microsoft's Minecraft Earth. Today, Minecraft Earth has arrived on the Google Play Store for Android, but it's only in beta for the time being. Just like with other apps and games that have the use this pre-register functionality, um, you will be getting a notification as soon as the game has been released for download. There's no date yet as to when it will debut on Android, but now that the game is listed on the Play Store, it probably means it'll be sooner rather than later. If you want to give it a shot even sooner, Minecraft Earth is available for beta in Android. You'll need to sign up for the closed beta and have a Microsoft or Xbox Live account to participate. Signups are currently available on the official Minecraft website, earth.minecraft.net. Uh, for those of you wondering if you are interested, it should work on most Android devices so long as they support AR Core and are running Android 7.0 Nougat and above. According to the description here, discover a new dimension of Minecraft as you create, explore, and survive in the real world. Join a community of builders and explorers spanning the planet, collecting resources for your builds, craft an augmented reality, and then place them at life size. You can even team up with others for some mini adventures. And uh, yeah, 
I don't know. I can't wait to see how this goes. I mean, part of me wants to go, oh, this will be kind of interesting. And the other part is like, no, please just no. I Minecraft. Oh, please no. But then I'm like, why in the world is it making a resurgence back into regular streaming? I don't get it. Um, I truly don't. I thought I was going to be done with the game, but apparently not. Um, <laughs> it's going to be the game that, yes, uh, keeps on giving and uh, haunts me uh, forever. And I'm looking at Eddie right now on the screen. Um, yeah, there's. A, uh, I'm looking at him. Um, for those of you wondering, the uh, those Ender people, I call him Eddie. So just in case the, you're wondering, like, why do you call him that? It's long story. It would take me so long to explain i'd probably bore you half to death and uh then you'd fall asleep drooling um wouldn't be my fault i'd, I'd say stop drooling and finish the story but yeah um if you want me to explain that story to you at another time it, just let me know i'd be happy to recap it for you it's a, it's a long time uh conspirators community server joke but yeah that is the news for today. By the way, if you are on the go, it is possible to get this show on any podcast application you want. Just search for latest in tech news and uh, the tech news gadget podcast will pop right up for you for your enjoyment. And that will wrap it up for today in the latest in tech news. Thanks for tuning in. There will be no show tomorrow, so I will see you back here on Monday. The latest in tech news can be found on every major platform, including Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let us know by clicking that like button down below and leaving a comment if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening via the podcast, could you give us a quick review out on Apple Podcasts or the app that you're using to listen? That would be greatly appreciated. Also, double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor American. Remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side.